Hey Robot Makers, back in December I ordered my brand new Prusa Core 1 printer and it's finally arrived. I've been using it for a couple of days and I'm absolutely delighted. Let's take a closer look. I first saw the Core 1 printer back in December at the Sanjay Mortimer Rep Rap Festival. I actually didn't get any footage of it while I was there. Apologies about that. For the past five years I've been using two Ender Pro 3 series printers and this is a major upgrade for me. My existing setup has been these two Ender Pros connected via Octoprint with a Raspberry Pi on each. So the first obvious improvement is this is an enclosed printer. This means the temperature inside the chamber is much more stable and we can use much more difficult to print filaments such as PETG or ABS. It's also a Core XY printer which means the geometry of how it prints is obviously different. It prints much quicker than the Ender Pro 3 printers and the quality is so much better. The build surface is silky smooth which means you get these really nice quality prints and the first layer seems to print perfect every single time. The other difference seems to be with this build plate that unlike the enders which have to scrape off with a little spatula, these ones simply just pop off when you bend the uh, build plate. So these come away and they leave absolutely no residue. If you do leave any fingerprints on the build surface, you can give the surface a quick spray with isopropyl alcohol and that will get rid of those. Let's talk about the Prusa ecosystem. So Prusament is the Prusa own branded filament. It's quite expensive to buy in the UK. It's about £50 per kilogram versus £20 for say Esun PLA+. However, all filament is not created equally. A large part of that cost is actually the shipping cost. So if you buy in bulk, you'll pay less. The print settings for each of these filaments is also dialed in in the Prusa slicer so you can get perfect prints every time. So this is based on the Slicer 3 software and it's completely open source. It'll work with any 3D printer, not just Prusa's own printers. But obviously this has been designed to work perfectly with the Prusa ecosystem. So let's add some models to this. I've been printing out some SMARS robots. So I'm going to multiply this so that we've got 32 on the bed. So let's add an extra 31. If I now hit that button there, it'll position these so that they can all be printed at the same time. I don't require any supports for these, they're going to print nicely. So I now hit slice now. Uh, you can see there a breakdown of what's actually taking the most amount of time on this print. So the perimeter is taking um, 50 minutes to do, the external perimeter is 33 minutes and the solid infill 42 minutes. So we could perhaps play around with the infill if we didn't want this, but these are quite small pieces. They probably need to be quite solid. So to actually send this to my printer, I just click on this send to connect. I can then decide whether I want to print this now. Um, let's go ahead and say add to the queue. Confirm that. That's now sending off that file to the Core 1 printer behind me and it'll start printing when we, we go over to the uh, Prusa Connect. We can do that straight from the slicing software. So Prusa Connect is a web-based software where you can control your printer remotely. It's an optional service, you don't have to sign up for this, but I find this is quite a useful feature. So if you want to print something else, you can simply just head over to the uh, 3D editor there. You can hit the trash can, it'll wipe everything off the, the build surface. Let's add in that chassis there. And we can then slice that. That one does actually require some supports. So let's do uh, from the build plate only. We'll slice that and you can see we've got some nice organic supports there. I find the organic supports work much better than the, uh, the rectilinear ones. Okay, let's send that to connect. And this time I'm actually going to say send and print now. I've got some black PLA prusament in the printer so as soon as that reaches the printer it'll start to fire up and we can check that there's nothing on the build surface already. I've actually bought the uh, Prusa camera for the Core 1 that's arriving on Friday so I'll actually be able to see from within the chamber the print and if there's anything on the bed or if there's any spaghetti or anything happening we can actually stop the printer remotely. We can even stop it from a uh, app on the phone. So in here we've got all the usual kind of settings you'd expect from a slicer. You can dial in exactly how you want these to be or you can you can simply go to like beginner mode and you've got less options, less complications there. So there's a beginner, a normal and an expert mode. We can choose what kind of filaments we want. So if we know that this is a Prusa filament, a Prusament, we can select that type of PLA from up here and it will know exactly what kind of temperature each of the different layers should be on there. Really, really dialed in for perfect prints. You can even select the colour there. So printables is the 
community website where you can actually upload your 3D models, you can share them with other people and you can also download other models that people have created themselves. You can even earn credit towards free filament, free prusament, simply by uploading your models. Another nice feature is the little screenshot that you get of the print that's currently printing. You can see this little isographic view here of the burger bot that we've just started printing. You can also see the print jobs of where they started when they finished. You can also get some information about the current temperature of the nozzle, the current bed temperature, the material that you're using, the speed that you're printing at, the current Z height. You can also see the current chamber temperature as well. So you're trying to cool it down there from 29 degrees to 20. So I've made a couple of other notes of things I really like about the Prusa Core 1. Filament detection. I like the fact that it can detect if the filament has actually run out. This was something that would happen not very often on my Ender Pros, but if it did happen, they would just carry on regardless. They have no way of detecting if there was filaments present or not. The build quality is absolutely superb. The printer is rock solid. It's quiet. It's quite heavy, but that also means that it's very stable structurally. It's very quiet as well. Very quick, obviously, to print. Because you can put more things on the build plate, at the same time you can actually build things you can actually print things quicker with my Ender Pro 3s I would find that I could reliably print something that was in the middle of the build plate but anything that was on the sort of peripheries because of reasons um, probably to do with the bed leveling I couldn't really reliably print and I certainly couldn't print on the, the entirety of the print bed so this means I can with now with the core one I can print things much better the bed leveling on the core one is absolutely superb I've not had any issues so far with the bed not being level it doesn't have those silly little screw things that you have to try and level it out I've never been able to get those to work very well both of my enders have the BL touch as well they can do the probing but you can't really beat just having a level bed the fact that it's a cool chamber it doesn't have a heater in it but it does uh, allow the chamber to cool down that means that we can get a consistent temperature in the chamber without having to have the door open the build surface is really nice as well the uh, the silky smooth build surface means that you get these really mirror like finishes on the prints obviously mine's brand new so there's no blemishes yet and I'm sure over time it will get a few little things on it but the great thing is they're actually double sided so you can just flip it over and then you've got another build surface that's pristine so unlike these end ones this is my current build plate. You can see there there's a great big hole <laughs> where it's uh, clearly gone through. But it's only one sided, so the other side is just the magnetic side. With the core one you can just flip it over and you've got another reusable side. Loading and unloading the filament is really easy to do. On the enders they are, have a they have a Bowden tube so you have to push the filament all the way through the tube before it gets to the hot end and it's actually the, um, the mechanism that drives the filament through is right at the very end of the Bowden tube rather than being on the hot end itself. So if you want to push some filament through uh, of a different colour You've essentially got to waste all that filament that's in there maybe like 15 centimeters 20 centimeters worth of filament and that's not great so i find it's much more less waste with the uh decor one there's two leds in the uh in the core one you can just see behind me there that blue bar is the status indicator so that tells you just at a glance that it's currently printing something it's blue if it's green it's kind of ready to print and i assume if it's red there's been some kind of issue there there's also a led inside the chamber that so you can actually see what's printing and that will dim um, when it's printing after a couple of seconds just turn the knob and it'll come back on so i paid 949 pounds for my printer plus 91 pounds for the shipping and then another 200 pounds vat on top of that so grand total of about 1139 according to the order that i have on my screen here i hope you enjoyed this short video and i shall see you next time bye for now